Meanwhile, speaking of people who are confirming their political priors, so yesterday, oil futures completely dumped. I mean, down to negative $37.63. People were paying people to take barrels of oil off their hands. Why? Well, because there literally is no storage facility. The fact is that right now what we are watching is a collapse in demand. And this is one of the problems is when, when you talk about the recovery, one of the things that you have to look at is how much has the underlying demand curve actually changed because people's behavior has changed. So nobody's driving right now. The oil industry isn't tanking for financial reasons or systemic reasons. It is tanking because no one is driving and because businesses are not operating. And that means that nobody has any use for oil. So there's a glut of oil on the market and oil has an expiration date and it needs to be refined. And it's more expensive right now to refine it than it would be to just dump it at this point and do nothing with it. And so the futures contracts, which are going to take hold in May, on May 1st, basically the oil companies are betting that there will be no buyers for the oil and there'll be a complete glut of oil. So this is obviously not great for the oil industry because if they can't make profit, then they are going to start shutting down the pumping. And what you're going to see is that these oil companies are not supremely flexible, that as the economy ramps back up, they're going to start pumping again, but slower. American fracking is actually a lot more flexible and is going to fill some of that gap, which is not a bad thing for American fracking. But when I say confirming political priors, let me show you a perfect example. So the oil prices dump in historic fashion, historic fashion, right? According to the New York Times, prices went negative, meaning that anyone trying to sell a barrel would have to pay a buyer 30 bucks in part because of the way oil is traded. Futures contracts that require buyers to take possession of oil in May are expiring on Tuesday. Nobody wants the oil because there's no place to store it. So AOC immediately tweets out a couple of absolutely asinine things because she is a moron. Okay, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Representative Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez has the IQ of a kumquat, maybe a low quad on the upper end. Okay, she, she really just, she, she is just an idiot. Okay, so she tweets out, you absolutely love to see it. This, along with record low interest rates, means it's the right time for worker-led mass investment in green infrastructure to save our planet. Cough. Okay, so I'm not sure why, why she is why she's coughing. I mean, I, I hope that all is well with AOC's health. But first of all, to celebrate, you absolutely love to see the collapse of the oil industry that supports tens of thousands of American jobs. Really? That's good. So she deleted that one. But then she put up a new tweet, and her new tweet is just as stupid. She tweets, now is the time to create millions of good jobs, building out the infrastructure and clean energy necessary to save our planet for future generations, for our economy, our planet, and our future. We need a Green New Deal. I don't think she understands how prices work. She tweeted out, this snapshot is being acknowledged as a turning point in the climate movement. Fossil fuels are in long-term structural decline. This, along with low interest rates, means it's the right time to create millions of jobs transitioning to renewable and clean energy, a key opportunity. What in the actual F is she talking about? Oil, they're paying you to take oil. And she's like, this is a great time to invest in windmills. Great time to invest in windmills. Was she dropped on her head as a small child? I, I can't think of any other explanation. BU needs to get, uh, she should get a, re like, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to advocate for AOC to get her college tuition waived from BU because she did not get her money's worth. I choose an econ double major at BU. And somehow she graduated with a degree. This does not speak well of Boston University. So if she's looking for a legal advocate for her free tuition at BU, she didn't get anything for her money. Okay, there was no consideration in that particular contract. When the price of oil is zero, that is a horrible time to invest in windmills and green energy. What the F are you talking about? This is sort of like saying, you know, did you see there's a glut of chocolate on the market? The price of chocolate is zero. Like it's, it's literally zero. You could walk into the supermarket right now and just pick up. They'll pay you to take bags of chocolate back to your house. Have you ever thought of a better time to buy kale? What? What are you? What? Like the whole point is now's a great time to fill up your car, right? Now's a horrible time to invest in expensive alternative energies when the, like, does she not understand the purpose of a carbon tax, right? The purpose of a carbon tax is to artificially raise the price of oil to artificially raise the price of filling your car so that it creates an economic incentive for you to instead invest in more expensive alternative energies, which thanks to the raised price of oil would now be lower in cost than the oil. But if the prices of oil drop, no one in the, like, are you buying an energy efficient vehicle for more money when the cost of oil is zero? She, so she's a full scale idiot. But again, this is confirmation bias at work, right? She, she is just confirming her priors. She's just confirming her priors. And when you see people confirming their, your priors, their priors, it does make you suspicious. It does make you suspicious that people are not being honest about broad scale public policy. See, right now, if you want people to take life altering measures, like staying at home, right, like keeping their kids at home, no summer camps, no movies, 
no restaurants, no eating out. You want people to shelter in place. You're going to need a high level of trust. And that trust is going to have to be based on the idea that you are not doing this for an ulterior motive. Right? Th think about your daily life. There's so many things where you rely on people not having an ulterior motive. Right? So somebody says to you that you, you bring your car in, your car is broken, you bring it to an auto body shop, and they say, okay, well, we need to replace the transmission. And then you find out that they are being subsidized by the transmission company, and for every transmission they sell, they're getting a $200 kickback. Well, that's going to change your math on whether you actually need to replace the transmission, isn't it? Right? You're going to think to yourself, oh, this person has an ulterior motive. Maybe they're not being honest with me. In, in order for there to be any level of trust in the most broad-ranging and deep measures in American history, there is going to, I mean, in terms of civilian populations, there's going to have to be a high level of trust. That trust is being undermined each and every day by partisan actors who obviously are attempting to confirm their own priors rather than looking at the actual events on the ground. Facts don't care about your feelings. And it's a fact that The Ben Shapiro Show is the largest conservative podcast in the nation. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all of our content.